about book reviews. <laughs> It is a well-known fact here on booktube that book reviews are some of the hardest videos to put together and film and nobody watches them. Why is that? Isn't that what we're here for is to review and talk about books and promote the books that we love and find new books? But why do book review videos get the lowest amount of views? I have a theory, and I've talked this over with a couple of other booktubers, one of which was Elaine uh, from her channel Books by Elaine's, and I will link her video where she talks about book reviews below so you can watch that. I think it's because a lot of times you don't want to watch a review unless you've already read the book. There might be spoilers or things that you don't want to hear about just yet, and it is hard to read every book. <laughs> that people have made reviews about. I think book reviews are important and valid and I still think that we should do them, but maybe we should do them in a different way. And Aileen talked about maybe instead of doing like a traditional book review talking about uh, like reasons why you should read this book. So I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna try that out with this book, Meddling Kids by Edgar Quintero. If you have not heard me talk about this book before, Meddling Kids is about this cast of characters who spent their summers in this small town in Oregon and they would solve mysteries. And the last mystery they solved, they may have caught the wrong person. So cut to years later where they are in their mid-twenties trying to figure out life and uh, this mystery comes back to haunt them. <laughs> Here are five reasons why you should read Meddling Kids by Edgar Quintero. Reason number one, them Scooby-Doo feels. <laughs> Obviously from the title, this is a riff on Scooby-Doo, the whole teens go out and solve a mystery. I grew up with Scooby-Doo. I'm sure a lot of you grew up with Scooby-Doo or the Hardy Boys or Nancy Drew or something like that. And this is a concept that has never really gotten old for me. Like, it's silly and fun and I love it. It's great. But this is not a direct copy of any of those. This riffs on it. It takes the tropes that we are used to and twists them just enough where it's still familiar, but it is also fresh and new. Reason number two, the characters. They are relatable, they are diverse, there is LGBTQ plus representation, they are funny and badass and smart and clever. They reference the original Scooby-Doo cast but they update them in a way that is good for now. <laughs> So like the overall plot of the novel, the characters take the tropes of the original Scooby-Doo cast and twist them in a way that makes them new and fun and exciting. They play off of each other really well. You could definitely see how these characters would be friends in real life and also maybe my friends. I want to be friends with them. They're great. <laughs> Reason number three, the action. If you love capers and fights and people using their ingenuity to solve mysteries and running around getting into trouble, you will dig the plot of this book. The writing style takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're in it, you're in it and you're, you just want to find out what happens and how our heroes get out of this mess that they've gotten themselves into and save the day. Reason number four. This is a great book to read in your 20s. On the surface level, it is about a caper, a cast of characters solving this crazy mystery. But below the surface, it's also an allegory for figuring out your 20s, especially people who are in their 20s now. Growing up, you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get through school, get through college, find a job, live the rest of your life. But then once you get to that rest of your life part, things aren't set on rails for you anymore and you have to figure it out. And when you're off trying to figure things out and maybe you're running into some problems, it would be great to have like somebody to blame for those problems. Like a big bad, a scary monster that you can unmask at the end of the story. Uh, but there isn't. <laughs> there aren't actual big bads in real life. Actually, sometimes there are. But for like regular problems, like what do I do with my life? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Where do I fit in? I have this general sense of ennui. Uh, it would be great to pin them all back on like this scary thing happened to me in my teen years and now it is following me and that is to blame for all my troubles. And we don't have that in real life. So <laughs> this book is kind of cathartic in that way. But if you're not in your 20s, it's still a great thing to read. Like maybe you are approaching your 20s and you want to know what it is like. Scary monsters are after you. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
mostly, kind of, a little bit. And finally, reason number five why you should read Meddling Kids is the tone. The humor mixed with sci-fi and horror is great. The only sci-fi I really like to read is funny sci-fi. I just really love the humor in this book. It does not take itself too seriously. There is still peril and you care about the characters and there are some times where you're like reading through the pages like what's gonna happen to them and they're all gonna die. And then there's like a really funny joke mixed in there. And for me that, that did not like ruin the pace of it or anything. It just enhanced it a lot. Like yes, Life is perilous and bad things happen, but you can still have humor and laugh about them. And this book captures that, that sense of humor so well. So there you have it, five reasons why you should read Meddling Kids by Edgar Quintero. If you have already read this book, let me know down in the comments. If you have plans to, let me know that as well. Or if you just want to chat about books, let me know what you think about this style of reviewing. I think I might do a five reasons why video for every book that I like. That could be, that could be ambitious. I don't know. If you like this video, click subscribe below to get more from me. Uh, follow me on Instagram or Goodreads for more bookish goodies. My Instagram is mostly books, sometimes food, and also cats. So that's fun. Those are all my favorite things. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.